Okay, lab coat agents, what is going on? Welcome to another amazing webinar. It's going to be action packed. And today we have a really special guest. Uh, Monica Reynolds is here with us. She began her real estate career over 40 years ago or 40 ish years ago, maybe not over, but I know it was around 40. She was one of the top agents in North Dakota for many years before she relocated to Southern California in 89, where she and her partner averaged over 200 home sales a year. So she's practicing what she preaches. She pioneered the hiring of administrative assistants and building personal uh, and building professional team structures along with replicatable and scalable systems so that real estate agents could take their business to another level of production. She's always been a trailblazer and now she's the VP of MAPS Coaching for Keller Williams, the largest coaching company in the world. Welcome. Monica Reynolds, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. We appreciate it. You know, it's my privilege. I love to, to chat and talk. And like I said, I got something up here that hopefully somebody will, will be able to use. I've seen a lot of mistakes. I've made them myself and I've also seen a lot of successes. Yeah. And also, I just want to say we've got Tristan here, my trusty sidekick. You're my sidekick today. We also have Paul Morris. Some of you guys might know he's the uh, regional director of Southern California region for KW and the best-selling author of Wealth Can't Wait. So, Paul, thanks for being here with us as well. Hey, thanks for including me. And, of course, uh, I know I know the Lab Coats folks really well. Appreciate all that they do in terms of information sharing uh, for realtors and bringing best practices and lots of things, especially as times get tough. And then in terms of uh, Monica, which is probably why you have me on here, because I, I, <laughs> I, I know both groups so well, working with Keller Williams now for over 15 years, MAPS Coaching has been absolutely a key to getting the models that Gary Keller has into action. So there's all these phenomenal uh, models. And then if I'm a realtor, how do I get that into action? And the short answer is MAPS Coaching. Now, Monica Reynolds comes in and she really did a number on MAPS Coaching in terms of, <laughs> in terms of lifting, you know, when you're, when you're running the largest coaching company in real estate coaching company in the world, it's, uh, it's, it's a big deal to uphold standards and also make sure that these models are very, uh, very nicely delivered to the field. So I am delighted to be here. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You know what, let's talk about what you said. The rate, way it was so easy for me to take this position in July and run maps and work with Gary is that I've been a coach for 25 years. There's probably no one that's had more one-on-one -on -one calls. I'll challenge anyone. I've had over 9,000 one-on-one calls and I quit counting. I'm uncle, I give up. And I knew what the coaches wanted and I knew more importantly what the clients needed to have a great experience. And Gary was just totally open. He goes, yep, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and basically gave me carte blanche. And he said, yes, and off we went to the races. And so it's been a fun experience. It's been a good ride. We've been having a good time and delivering a great, great coaching uh, experience for everyone. That is awesome. Well, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. I've had several MAPS coaches myself, so I can definitely speak to that. So let's kick it off and start uh, start the hard-hitting questions, Tristan. <laughs> All right, Monica, let's get right into it. Uh, Zoom's a little shaky right now. We've got a lot of people on, that's why. But let's get right into our first question, and that's, that's this. What should we expect to happen for the rest of the year in real estate? Well, you know, here's what I'm a... I'm a growth minded person mindset and I don't have a fixed mindset. And so what this pandemic has done has changed us to what I call real estate 2.0. And so what I suggest to you is that this is the new normal. You've heard that many times. And there, if there's no changes, then this is the way it's going to be. And I'm an optimist that hopefully there is a, vaccine and until there is a vaccination that we can all take to feel safe i think what we have is a virtual world and we have a physical world and the the agents that embraced the possibilities of how do i keep business going what do i need to do have really thrived in this market so what i would say to you it's more of the same and possibly could be more difficult and if i'm wrong and it goes back to something more normal? I don't think so. 
Um, I think it's going to be a little bit more of the same and a little bit more physical enhanced with safety. Um, until we have a vaccination, I'm not sure that there is any answer that I don't think we're ever going back to normal. That's over with. There's so many agents that I talk to that say, boy, I, the clients are welcoming a Zoom call versus me coming over. I'm doing pre-qualifying by Zoom. We're talking about staging by Zoom and, and all of that. Everything is virtual. And they go, I'm not getting in the car. It's a gal like coach in Alaska. And she would spend in three, four hours a day in the car driving to appointments. She doesn't do that anymore. She can take five listings in less than five hours. She's excited. She can only take two before. It's efficient. It's efficient. And yet you've got to be smart enough to know when do you bring that physical component in and who is that you bring that into. Don't miss the physical component when it's safe. And I, I no. love that. You think that this is going to change the way that we do business for after 2020? Are we going to continue to do a lot more virtual? Or do you think people are going to go back to being comfortable uh, like, like we kind of functioned before in real estate? What are your thoughts? No. No, I will never go back, in my opinion, and in Gary Keller's opinion, too. We've got a new world. Mm -hmm. There are too many people that have learned the Zoom call. There's too many people that have learned how to do this virtually. And there are agents that are excelling at an incredibly high level very efficiently. Mm -hmm. so let's talk about some businesses. So we've got over 400 employees at KWRI in Austin, where I work. And we left on March 13th. And thank you to Gary. He's very, very conservative about that. He thought, okay, let's get out of the building. We're done. And so we went out before a lot of people did. So I, I, can, I thank him for that because he wanted everyone safe. No one's been sick, which is a miracle. Our business is, is what's great is that in my department, I have 28 employees that, that work with me and I've got four leaders. We are working more hours and more efficiently than we've ever done. And what's interesting to me, and I knew the 28 people, sort of, but when I see them on a Zoom call every day, I really know them. I know their personalities. I've met their dogs. I've seen their kids walk by. You know, I know more about them. And so we've got a stronger community. Um, we, you know, we may not go back as a full team back into the office space just because of social distancing and, and protecting people. And so we're fine to work from home, you know, fine. We, we, so, so to answer that question, we're not going back to the old way. And until there's a vaccination, how do you put 450 people in two floors? You know, and, and, and have social distancing, you know, we've got all these programmers there that are, in cubes and all my people are in cubes they're not six feet apart they're not six feet apart and, and so people are working well from home so i think it's a new world where people will learn to work from home and i i think it's a it's a whole new world but you know in the real estate world you do need a physical space and so one of the things that i've you know really helped the coaches understand is that everyone to have a physical space in their home that looks appropriate. Too many times I see people's bedrooms, right? <laughs> Too many, you know, you can get the freight screens in the back and this office here is my jail cell. I've been in this one six <laughs> at night every for three months now. But what I want you to hear is that it's going to be a combination of both. You're going to need an office. You need a community. And yet you might not spend all the time there. And when you're hiring people, they may not come in all the time, as long as you've got schedules and the right work ethic and the right culture. I mean, we're working just fine from home. We haven't missed a beat. In fact, we pulled off bold in a very short time with, you know, 42,000 people on a live call. I mean, we that's no joke. That's, that's pretty amazing. That's definitely no yeah, joke. That's that, definitely yeah, but that took five departments. So it's like, it's legal, it's accounting, it's, you know, marketing. It took five departments to talk and collaborate. And none of us were in the office. I couldn't walk down the hall and go to marketing and say, well, what about this? And why can't we do that? And I couldn't go into legal and find out where the contracts are. I mean, it, it, we did it virtually. It worked out great. So this is the new normal. So if you haven't embraced it and you don't have the right mindset, you got to fix that immediately and say, what am I doing to grow my business right now? Yeah, and, I love that. Guys, things. I want to just add one thing. Oh, wait, Paul, let, right. let Paul ask a question because he's been trying to get a word in for uh, like 
Well, yeah, go ahead, here, I'll transition into it, Monica. It's exactly what, what Twitter is doing. You know, they've adjusted. They say, hey, guys, from now on, you don't have to come into work. We're going to go in and you can work from home. So, Paul, go right ahead, buddy. No, and, and one of the things, it's also, it's interesting because I'm listening to Monica. And, of course, I agree with that. And also, um, uh, you know, reading in the chat box a little bit. Uh, where people are saying like, hey, no, you know, it really, it, it, you know, once this virus goes away, you know, real estate is an in-person business and we're really going to get back to that. And, and I'm going to tell you, I don't think that Monica disagreed with that. Oh, yeah. one, of the no. things, one of the things that Gary Keller talked about, because Gary is very forward thinking, is before the virus, Gary and MAPS Coaching and everybody, we were putting our heads together. What does real estate look like five years from now? And, and the thing that saves us, that, that, that makes us, that makes the tech-enabled agent relevant, right? So that technology, so I agree with the people in the chat box, that technology will never replace the realtor because it's such a personal and important transaction. That being said, the folks that will win in the future are the tech enabled agents. That's why Gary's so focused on building the right technology and maps coaching in teaching and implementing uh, uh, practices that use it. So what I believe is that this thing, this vision that we had of five years from now, if anything, what we're dealing with right now is going to push us faster into the future. So it's mm -hmm. not changing the future. It's changing right now into a time of the future. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, especially because that gives us a distinct, it gives the people who get up and go a distinct advantage. And that's where MAPS coaching comes in. Because if, if people are like me, I, I, I can move mountains, but I, I, I have trouble moving mountains by myself. I need the accountability. I need the person to check in with. I need to the, the, say like, oh yeah, hey, do this, try that. And then I check back with them. And you can create that community uh, with coaching or with uh, other groups of realtors. But, you know, uh, Monica and MAPS does a great job of that. Thanks for letting yeah. me jump in on yeah. that. Yeah, you know, here's the thing that everybody really has to understand. A year ago, we wouldn't be talking about Zoom calls for, virt for listing presentation or buyer presentations and getting, you know, buyer agencies signed on a Zoom call. We wouldn't be talking about that. And yet the physical is absolutely important. You've got to have the physical in some parts of, of the transaction if you can. And yet, if you, if you look at what we have right now and hope for the best, I'm not waiting for the best. I'm dealing with the now. Right. And so the people who are dealing with now are the people that are thriving. This is what we got. I don't know what September is. If you're a news junkie like I am, you hear, okay, we could spike. Okay, we're going to get a vaccine. Okay, I don't think I'm signing up to take it right away because then you've got listen to the trial periods, right? So the whole yeah. so our information is crazy. But I know what I got right now, and if somebody feels safe and you can go over to a home and you feel safe and the client feels safe, go to the home. Otherwise, you pivot and you do something totally different. So you've got to learn yeah. both worlds. Yeah, I think um, I think definitely, yeah, both worlds in the sense, and I also think it's going to make us more efficient in the sense that, like, you know, now there's this choice, right? Like, there's this choice of, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, um, would you like to do this through FaceTime or Zoom, or would you like me to come to your house? Or Mr. and Mrs. Seller, or Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, um, would you like to see this house at noon on a Wednesday, I know you're working. How about we do a Zoom call and I walk you through the house? So like before that would have been strange, right? But now it's it's like that, what's happening now in our new normal, that's going to move over. And it's not like it's going to be the only way we do business, but now it's ingrained in people's heads. So now it's an option, right? And it makes us more efficient in getting things done and moving things along, right? Especially, like I bought my house in Michigan site unseen two years ago. So I know it can be done. And, I, and NAR reported last year that 20% of homes sold when people, and people didn't even see them, you know, before they yeah, sold them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I bought a house site unseen. I closed on a house that I sold in Arizona. I had a notary, uh, notarized.com. In some states it's legal. Apparently in Arizona it is. And the notary met me at 11 o'clock because that's when I had the time at 11 o'clock at yeah. night notarized me. I held my license up. I swore I was Monica Reynolds and boom, 
It was notarized. Yeah. I did the closing in 22 minutes. I love that. So this is a yeah. question that, and this, I think we can, it's a good segue into the next question because a lot of times when we're stuck at home, you know, um, uh, we, 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 a lot of people tend to not feel as motivated, right? And, you know, some, some depression can sink in and anxiety, you know, I got a, a seven-year-old and a five-year-old at home. Tristan has little kids at home as well. Um, so how could an agent create an ideal schedule for themselves right now during this time uh, to keep succeeding at a high level and stay motivated? You know, I'm going to go back to the basics. Okay. So basic number one is this is that you put you in your schedule first. So at Sunday night, look at your schedule and you put you in there. Where is you time? Do you need to get up at 6 a.m. so you have 6 to 6.30 or 6 to 7 by yourself where you need to like meditate or read something or, or just look at your schedule and have a cup of coffee and relax? What is the, where's your me time? When do you do your exercising? You know, one person that I've talked to that's a great agent. She says, I have to go on a walk every night, not with my dog, not with my kids, and not with my husband. I just need to be alone. So where is your time for you? And so we always forget about you, and we all know if you don't take care of you, the rest of the people don't get taken care of either. Then you put your family time in. And yes, this is different with COVID-19. There's going to be people that are daycare people. You guys have daycare because you're now taking care of your little kids. Your school teacher, school's not out yet. I think it's out next week. And then you got you got kids you got to watch still too. So you, you're also a school teacher. So you're putting those times in. And if you have a significant other, a spouse at home, you're juggling. And so, but you start with you, you start with your family time. And then you start with, which I think is really great, you put your work in. Now, I've always taught this for a million years. Hardly anybody does it, but I think it's the best thing you can do in your schedule. You put dollar signs next to the things that are dollar productive activities. For example, lead generation, dollar sign. Lead follow-up, dollar sign. Appointments, Zoom call, personal, whatever, dollar sign. Writing contracts, negotiating, dollar sign. Role playing, learning your scripts, critical, always to the growth of your business, dollar sign. Not too much after that's a dollar sign. So how many dollar signs do you have in your schedule today? And so it's about the dollar signs. It's not about the stuff. So those are the, the secrets to that. And then this was something that I heard the other day. I'm a, I'm a constant learner and getting ideas and thinking about stuff. And this one guy did some talk, and I've taken like 36 time management courses over the years from, from you know, Stephen Covey to Franklin Daytimer, and you name it, I've taken them all. And he's... Yeah that was really interesting and not everybody could do this but just think about if you could he said that he gets up at about quarter to 5 a.m every every day and he does he does a whole day's worth of work from 6 to 12. now naturally you'd sit back and go oh okay so he's got the afternoon off he goes no 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 from 12 to 6 i start my second day and it's the same schedule as the first part of the day so if you get up from six, you do your emails, you do this, whatever, you do your lead generation from, you know, 8.30 to 10.30. He's now starting this lead generation again, like 4.30 to 5 four, to 6 o'clock. So he's doing two days worth of work in one day. Does that make sense? Great. 100%. 100%. It does. You know, and he said, so at the end of the month, I've worked 40 days. How many days did you work? And when you think <laughs> The dollar productive activities we do are probably six hours or less. And we've got a guy that's, that's rethought this whole plan. Now, not everybody can do that because you've got kids and family and responsibilities. However, it certainly is interesting to think like that, isn't it? I love that kind of thinking. Different. Schedule, like if you control your schedule, you control your future. That's so it's true. true. It's definitely much more important nowadays to put those dollar signs near things oh, yeah. when you're at home because you can easily start, you know, your mouse can start, you know, veering over towards Facebook more often or Netflix. And, you know, it's just really important to just keep your eye on the prize, you know, when you have a lot of distractions at your disposal. So I like that piece of advice for sure. Good. So, uh, Monica, one of the things that 
you know, as, as all of us on this call are doing more and more webinars and being leaders, and, and one of the things that I see is, you know, if you turn on the news, you hear, you know, just doom and gloom all the time. So one of the things that I, I uh, work on, and I think that, look, that's face reality, okay? I, I get that. Let's, let's see where reality is, uh, but also where is the light, okay? So what, what is the, where's the light at the end of the tunnel? Where, where are the things that, and, and it's back to, um, uh, back to, I think Nick mentioned, you know, it can get very depressing, you know? Uh, I have a 16 year old daughter at home who's very social, you know, she's totally stir crazy. So Monica, what do you look forward to? Okay. What is the light at the end of the tunnel for you? What, what do you look forward to? Let's say end of 2020 when, 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 what, what's the thing that's carrying you through that hope, that vision of the future? You know, the, the way I, I mean, I'm 71 years old. I've been doing this rodeo a long time and, and I love the rodeo. I love the opportunities. And, you know, I look at, you know, I call it red, the real estate guy. I've been through probably five of these crazy things and this is different than them all. This one, you know, doesn't make a lot of sense. And yet it's, it's, it's a devastating, you know, uh, for so many people. It's not a financial devastation, it's a loss of family devastation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's totally different. And yet, I, I think you go back to a couple of things. You've got a positive mindset. Now, do I have breakdowns? Yeah, but you won't hear about them. I get over it. I, I control myself at some point, and it's just natural. But I've got a real positive mindset. You know, I'm healthy. I'm above the dirt. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for the opportunities that I have. I have a you know, a gratitude book that I put two or three things that I'm very grateful for. Some nights I'm grateful for more than two or three. And mm -hmm. some nights I stare at that thing going, I got to be grateful for something. I got to think of something, right? Mm -hmm. And it just, it's just, and then I can reflect back to that book. So you have two choices and you can look toward the future and you look forward to every day. And there's nothing that none of us can't fix, change, or, or adapt to and how you deal with it. We're all natural leaders, and now is the time to lead your family, your team, your business, your clients. We're leaders, we're natural born leaders, and now it's who you are right now is showing up and magnifying. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I just look forward to every day and say, well, wow, that was interesting, and okay, now we're gonna do it that way. And um, this definitely has been a, a the big, big challenge for sure. And yet so many good things have come out of that. You know, talking to clients, uh, you know, they've, they've really learned who their team members are and who's showing up big time. Uh, they're learning who their family is. People are having dinner at the table. Um, I've got a daughter that's a real estate agent and a coach with us. And um, she's said many times that they haven't had dinner as a family except on weekends in years. Because one kid's going to soccer, one's going to swim, and then they go to tennis, and one's at football, one's at music lessons, and they got to go to church CCD. And they, their, her husband took one kid, he, she took the other, and they're just passing the night. And family, they're playing Monopoly. So there's so many good things that have come out of this. So be joyful of where, what you've learned that's coming out of this and how you can really grow your business. And so... I look forward to the future and I've always looked forward to the future and there's nothing that we can't, can't fix, change, work on and um, learn the lessons. And I love that, Monica. Oh, one thing that Monica said, sorry, sorry, <laughs> Tristan. Thank you. One thing that Monica said that is really uh, uh, resonates with me is that these times are like a magnification lens so that if you're a great leader, you have a great mindset it's like, if you're the light and it's a sunny day, that light doesn't show up as much, okay? If you're the light and it's darkness all around, suddenly you've become this massive center of hope. And that's the way I, I really hear, you know, all of Monica's activities going toward. So this is, this is a great opportunity. One other thing I hear all the time is that, like this, you know, these times are times of mass, massive wealth transfer. And that sometimes that kind of bums me out because like, well, if you're not sitting with a bunch of, you know, 
so the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Is that what that means? And I got to tell you, for realtors and for people that can take charge of their day to day, this is an opportunity when I was just a guessing number, Monica would, would know much better. 80% of realtors are doing nothing. Okay. And then you get the ones who are like, okay, well, let's get in bold pivot, right? Where, where Monica and her team, and that's very generous of you to say, oh, well, we had a whole team doing it. Yes, your team, okay, you and your team, you got more than 40,000 people on Bold Pivot, and that is, that is absolutely amazing. Those 40,000 people are now 40,000 in action, and that action separates them from the pack. They immediately become the light. So for somebody that wants to be part of the wealth transfer that doesn't have cash sitting on the sidelines, you can make up with that, make up for that by activities, the right activities. And Monica is the person to, uh, to tell us what are the things that we should be doing. So Tr Tristan, thanks again for, for allowing me, uh, cause I get fired up about this. So and I love it. It's you're good. on, you're you on fire, fire right now, buddy. It's good. All you're right, good. okay, all right. So well, first of all, you gotta get clear on a couple of things and that's your bottom line expenses right now. And I'm all about Go sell some houses. Go get some listings. There's so many red hot markets right now. It's unbelievable. So what I want you guys to hear right now is to look at your finances. And there are people that I know that are going to sell their home right now to take advantage of possibly things that are happening in the next six months. Um, there are probably seven million in forbearance. They think kind of like slowing down a little bit but there still will be more in forbearance. They're still projecting one out of four are going to uh, be unemployed. Those are horrific numbers. And so your guess is as good as mine. And mine is that if that is true, there will be more housing that will come on. And I, I kind of listened to Gary on this, it'll come on, there'll be an influx and then it'll probably slow again, low inventory. So when that influx comes on, is there opportunities there? Could you be looking at two or three people that you know that you could maybe put together a group and go buy an apartment or a duplex or something? Um, are you calling out of area owners right now to see what they would like to do with their investment? They own property where you live and yet they, the tax bill is sent to a different state. That was always a big part of my business over the years. Um, they don't know the market. And right now, if you believe what I believe that, we could be at the top of the market and yet price are holding right now and it's still a strong market. I don't know where it's going in July if one out of four Americans do not have a job and they have property. Um, you know, it's, it's, you just look at that, there's gonna be some changes. And so wealth building is about being creative. It's also about understanding how to make money and know what the properties are that you would buy. So for example, I always bought properties near a school, okay? I always bought the three bedrooms minimum. I always bought a two car attached garage. Believe me, there's homes that don't have garages. And so I had strict requirements. So what did they look like? And you know, invest in, in real estate, we understand that. Um, just happened to have this book here, it wasn't solicited, but this is a great book to start and to understand so you don't make mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes in investing and I've made a ton of money in investing. And so there's a right way and a wrong way. So, so seek out people who have done investing in real estate, pick their brain, understand that and go figure it out. You know, you've got to, if you, if I said to you, you've got to buy a property in the next six months, what would you do? You have to do that. And if you've not done it before, and it's, here's my biggest advice on that. It's easy to buy, it's hard to hold on. It's easy to buy, it's hard to hold on. Mm -hmm. Things will come around. So you wanna buy right, and you wanna make sure that if it is vacant, you can cover the nut, and you wanna make sure that you bought it right with enough money down, with a good plan to get that thing paid off as fast as you can, and hold on. Yeah, and just so people people under people realize that book was Millionaire Real Estate Investor. A couple of people were asking. It's oh, a millionaire Real sorry. Estate Investor. Yeah, yeah no, by Gary. By Gary. Yeah. Great book. Um, and Monica, I love I love um, a lot of what you said. And there's opportunity, unfortunately. Um, you know, 
it, it's it's interesting to say like you know there's opportunity right now when when obviously people are are hurting and suffering and and so we have to look for that opportunity for instance um you know one of my good friends is a is a realtor down in orlando and there's a big airbnb market there but all those airbnb uh owners you know they got to unload right and so it's sad that this is happening to airbnb but as an agent that's the type of stuff you got to go after you know because you got to feed your family you got to and you got to build your business and it forces you to kind of like go after that uh, that that market or that niche that you wouldn't have normally done and so i want to kind of like segue into a question that um kind of uh, goes goes along with what you were saying you know so bold pivot was a huge success 40 some odd thousand kw agents and and not just kw agents agents from we were talking about uh, agents from other companies are jumping into bold pivot right and so um uh, what what where should agents be focusing their 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 energy right now in terms of business because i feel like bold pivots talking a lot about that right so i guess we can talk a little bit about what's bold pivot teaching agents to do right now that's different than before and and what type of business should they be going after and what type of lead generating should they be focusing on you know i'm just going to go back to the basics 101 okay if your database is your only asset. It's not a Louis Vuitton bag. It's not your Lexus that has a lease on it. It's none of that stuff. It's never none of that stuff. It's your database. So it's focusing on your database and having what I call completes, name, address, phone number, and emails. How many do you have? The more people you have, the more opportunities you have. Um, there are a lot of agents that are probably going to go out of business. And so however you look at it, I think it's pretty good. They should go out of the business, you know, get out right and it's okay and that's fine i'm not being like hard nosed about that it's just that we have too many real estate agents right and so yet some of them have a database some of them have people that belong to them so i call that acquisition of databases acquisition of opportunities and so if i said to you guys you need to triple your database by january 1 to have the opportunities of 2021 to have massive opportunities. I believe everyone on this call could triple their business in probably 18 to 24 months if you worked on your database. There will be agents leaving. There will be agents who are sitting on the couch. They are couch potato. They will never get off the couch. And it's too late to come to the races. They will absolutely not be able to take care of themselves or their family unless they get a real job, whatever that means, right? And so what I, I just shared to everyone is to really think about your database. How are you connecting, you know, and in bold, we've talked about the I care calls. First, you call to say you care. Second time, you call to see how they're doing. You know, is there anything else we can do? Do you know anyone in a, a distressed situation that I could help? My second call would be like this. You know, I was just wanting to let call and check in. How are you doing? And then I'd say, so, you know what? I'm working from home and it's a little crazy here working from home after, you know, two, three months. I, I'm, it's difficult. How are you doing working from home? Oh, it's going okay. Well, how's your, you know, our company's doing okay. How's your company doing? Now you're asking how their company's doing and how they're doing. And you have to listen because some people may be saying things like, well, it's, you've got to build a trust bridge because they may be in a difficult situation. But by asking the question, you know, and I'm a script master, I love scripts and thinking about how to get the right information to help people. I help people with the American dream and I help them get out of the American dream if they need to. So there will be people in situations that have equity in their home and unless they have a right conversation with you, and they're losing their job, they may be better off getting their equity out at the top of the market and go rent something and look for a job. You might save their life by doing that. But if you don't ask those questions, and so to answer your question, it's about the database, it's about calling them, it's about connecting. Um, I see tremendous results with Facebook ads, um, mm -hmm. the tremendous results with people doing virtual open houses. I mean, who would have thought, you know, where you're advertising, going to do an open house here, going to do an open house here. And then everybody shows up on Facebook to watch it and, you know, scheduling appointments to go and see it personally. So it, it's about the database and who you know. And so that's your foundational piece. And then what is your marketing plan 
to grow your database, how would you double that this year? How would you triple it within the next 18 months? And then what are you doing in a marketing plan to take it to the next level? So if you have, you know, if you look like you're doing like, oh, well, you know, I email once a week and, you know, I make a call once a quarter. Okay, well, then you've got, you know, 54 touches. What if I said you need 140 powerful touches to your clients? You know, doing things that would be really great for them. What about doing a little video clip that says, you know, if you're thinking about withdrawing money, you know, from your IRA SEP account, here's three tips you need to know. Um, here's five tips on how to save on household expenses. Be relevant to the market and, you know, do a video on if you, if you know of anyone or yourself is thinking about, you know, um, working with your lender on forbearance and maybe miss a payment or two, please call me. There's a right way. There's a wrong way. I'd love to talk to you about it. That's and you important. can help them through that. Monica, there was a report that Facebook released yesterday that shows it's called uh, the state of small business report. And it said from their survey of 86,000 people uh, who are small businesses, 31% of owners and managers reported that their small business isn't currently operating. And that's, that's massive. So it goes exactly with what you said. I put the link up in the chat. So if people want to download that, but that's an yeah, you know, can I tell you a fun story that yeah. it happened here in Austin that we're all aware of and that Gary kind of mentioned it. Um, there, if you've ever come to Austin, there's a very famous place for lunch and breakfast and Gary would take people there. And it's a little hole in the wall called Shady Grove. And it's a half a mile away from a restaurant called Uchi, which is one of the most expensive places in Austin to eat at. And it's a, a sushi place. Okay, sushi, right? And you got American food at Shady Grove. When the uh, COVID-19 uh, came around, everybody shut down. Day one, Shady Grove shut down. Everybody went home. Uchi opened up a delivery service and car pickup. And they are exploded in business. You have to have a reservation to make an order to pick up your food because they pivoted and they changed how they did business. And so that's what we have to do. And yet it starts with the database and you've got to make these changes to thrive. And mm -hmm. going back to the old way, sure, you might be able to do some of that, but not all of it. Yeah. You know, you said something earlier that I, I know, question, Tristan, you have a question. I just want to make one comment. You said something earlier that made me think like, what were you saying, what you were saying before about, you know, reaching out to the database and giving them value, like maybe making videos about this, that, and the other. And so what made me think is we have plenty of time right now to create valuable content, right? We have plenty of time to create informative videos, you know, do, do create a YouTube series, you know, that, that, that gives this information, things that we felt like we didn't have time to do before, right? But everyone can do that, right? And so it's just that time to, while you're reaching out to your database, create information for them and, you know, send it out periodically, put it up on YouTube, promote it on Facebook, all that stuff, super powerful because you're just offering value. You're giving, 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 and then they're eventually going to ask you for help. And that's a great point. It just made me think of that. Create that content right now because you got all the time to do it. You bet. So, sorry, Tristan, go ahead. This is recorded, so just go ahead and, and join and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I just put up the link there. But, Monica, let's get even deeper into this. Let's get really specific here. So, so since the public is very nervous, you have some people that are nervous, some people that are not, and they just go around doing like, like nothing's happening. But you do have people that are, that are super serious about this. And when we talk to them, we're hearing things like, well, we, we may consider some, doing something like selling or buying when the crisis mm -hmm. ends. What would you say to, to someone that, that says that where you can explain to them something a little bit better as to possibly take some, some action into selling or either buying? What, what would be your dialogue with that? All right, so uh, let's do this. So let's say you're a seller and you say, we want to do something when everything calms down. And I say, gosh, I respect your opinion. So if you wanna learn something from me today, I always say I respect your opinion because that builds a trust bridge and that validates your opinion. Then I'm basically gonna tell you you're a knucklehead, but here's how I do it. 
<laughs> so I value your opinion. And let me share something to think about, okay? So right now, we've got a situation where we have extremely low inventory. Do you agree we have low inventory? I say yes. Yep. And I go, you're right. And do you agree that our interest rates are 65, 70-year low? They're like uh, 3.1, 3.2. And I saw something today that you could get 2.6 on a 15-year mortgage. Unbelievable. We have Keller Mortgage, and there's no points, no closing costs. If we had a buyer for your home, we'd be able to offer them that. And so do you agree that those two components are really attractive for someone who wants to sell their home? Do you agree? Yes. Okay, good. So get them to agree all the way, right? So I've got something else to consider with you. You know, we've got one out of four Americans that they keep saying on the news, right or wrong, we've got almost 40 million out of a job now. They said it's going to go over 50 million possibly. That's a lot of people and those people own homes. When those homes come on the market, they're going to come on at pretty good prices, probably market or below because they want to get their equity out because they are in possibly a desperate situation. When that happens, usually prices start to come down a bit because there's more competition. And I know that makes sense. So here's what I'd like you to consider. I want you to consider this. If I can sell your home at top dollar right now that you and I agree to, I make it critically safe for you, where you are absolutely protected and you are safe. And you are not gonna move out until you're comfortable to move out. But you will have to pay rent back at a reasonable rate back to the buyer. Would you consider those options so that you have your nest egg out, it's totally protected, and no one can take your nest egg away from you because of the pandemic? Would you consider putting your home on the market so we can get the most money and let's put it on today and let's get your nest egg out and I'll protect you all the way. Someone just said Monica for president. So Monica for president. I think that's a massive. Approach. Okay. So now you're a buyer and you want to hold off. I got this one too, let's right? Go, let's go. He's okay, running good. in 2024. Wow. You were waiting for this <laughs> webinar to announce that. Okay. All right. So you're a buyer. So gosh, you know, I respect that you want to pay. And may I share with you a couple things to think about? So right now, we can get you a mortgage with 0, 0.0 closing costs. And then when you're looking at the value of your home, that could save you $7,000. And the interest rates are around 3 to 3.2. And if you want to look like a 15-year, 10-year, you can get it in the twos. It's, it's unbelievable. So do you agree that the interest rates are like free? And yeah. They, yeah, pretty good. I, they're 65, 70 year low. Unbelievable. All right. So here's the second thing that I want you to think about. Right now, we have a challenging part of the economy in the country. And people are out of work, businesses that are not back. And if a lot of homes come back on the market, because unfortunately, people lost them through foreclosure, forbearance, short sales, whatever it happens to be, the banks are going to now look the interest rates to recover. That's just a natural thing that has happened historically. And when the interest rates go up, you will ultimately pay a lot more for any home that you're looking at. So let me ask you a question. If we can find a great home for you and we do it safely and we lock in an incredible interest rate, in fact, here's a great thing. If the interest rates go down with Keller Mortgage, they will allow you one time to re, redo it. So if we lock you in at 3.1 and it goes down to 2.9, you can unlock and you get that rate. So why don't, you, why don't we consider being open, let me very proactively find the right home for you and take advantage of this market. What have you got to lose? I'm willing to do all the hard work for you. I love it. So when you put love it like it. that, it makes a lot of sense. So uh, you're just putting it right back to us. I love the redirection on that, Monica. Yeah, I've been doing it a while. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. All right, Nick, go to you. Here you go. Yeah, hold on one second. I don't know what happened to my questions. All right, well. <laughs> oh, here they well, are. I found them. <laughs> I found them. So um, here's the thing. A lot of times, you know, the agents, they'll set goals, um, you know, and they set these goals kind of uh, in line with 
what they did the year before um, and they want to like, you know, uh, triple it or, or double it or whatever it is, right? And so we had this unforeseen circumstance. And so uh, real estate was, was non-essential in many, in many states for a long time. In Michigan, we were non-essential for uh, over two months. Yeah. What should agents do? Should they, should they dial back their goals? Uh, should they keep them the same? I mean, you know, because essentially, we, even though we could still show and sell homes without physically going there, right? For some, navigating that field obviously was was rather new to them. It was new to everybody. Um, we don't want to say, oh, don't keep your same goal, right? But what would you say to an agent that's saying, I got to reduce my goals? Would you say keep it the same and just still go for it or be realistic? You know, what's your, what's your opinion on that? You never change your goals. You never change your goals. You never change your goals. Now, my goals didn't change for the direction of maps. My strategies and my priorities have changed in how ah, I do things, I love it. right? So yeah. my strategies and priorities have changed. My goal did not change because I'm going to make my goal no matter what, and I'm doing it. And so you have to have that conviction. And yet when, you know, first of all, you've got to have a reasonable goal with a reasonable plan. You've got to have the infrastructure of people if you're doubling your business. You've got to have the infrastructure of lead generation if you're doubling your business. You know, it's about it's about your schedule. Does it support you doubling your business? And so when people say, well, I'm going to double my, my, uh, my goals are going to double this year, I go, okay, great. I respect that. So you guys are learning my trick now. I respect that. And so let's talk about that. Tell me about how this is going to, going to roll out. Because you're going to have to change your schedule. You've got to add more people. You've got to add more lead generation. Let's talk about all your sources in a business right now. So you never change the goal. You just change the strategies and the priorities on how you do it. You never change your goal. You stay excited about your goal. You look at your goal every day. One of the best coaching clients I had was a guy in Minnesota named Bob Kuyper. He was hilarious. And I said, how often do you look at your goals? Go, I sing my goals every day. I go, excuse me? He goes, I sing my goals every day. He goes, I took my goals on one page, right? And I laughed at them, three hole punched them, put them in the shower, and I read them every morning and sit out. <laughs> but that's, you've got to so internalize cool. your goal. You've got to know exactly what your goal is. And sometimes it's, it's not a moving target. It's not a moving target. I love that. Monica, I want to add something to, to what you're saying, and that's, the fact that we, we have up to 70,000 thoughts in a day, right? That's a, just a scientific fact of what they're finding now. And the way that we focus on those thoughts, because that's a lot of thoughts, are the questions we ask, right? And those goals that we continually read, right? And so what happens over the span of a day is when we let in other thoughts that have nothing to do with our priorities and thoughts, those doubts, or I can't, or I don't, uh, we start focusing on things that we can't achieve, right? And so what you're saying that really stood out for me was that one thing you said, if you put the little dollar signs on prospecting activity, right? That, that to me stood out quite a bit. So I just wanted to give you props to that because that's one way that we can then focus these 70,000 thoughts, which are mixed with good and bad, right? Sure. Uh, on something that's positive, on things that we can grow with. So thank you for that. Okay, can I give you another tip that nobody yeah. ever does? And I've been talking about this when the computers came out, okay? <laughs> Watch this one. So eventually, you want a saleable business. It's called your exit strategy, right? Mm -hmm. And so your, your database is your business that you sell. Again, it's not your office. It's not your handbag. It's not your car. It's none of that stuff. It doesn't matter. It's what you've got in that database. So I tell agents to do this all the time. You create a field with a dollar sign. You just sold Jim Johnson a house and you made a $9,000 commission. That $9,000 goes in that field. Jim Johnson gets divorced. He buys his wife buys a condo. He's now worth $32,000. Okay, then his wife now, she's worth $8,000 because she bought a condo. And so if I was going to sell my database to you and I said, I want you to see the 800 people or however it is you have in your, 
that I've sold homes over the last 10 years and it tells you exactly how much money I made off of each one. I got a referral from Jim and it was 5,000. I added that to the database. And so do you see how powerful that could be? Yeah, you're making it a lifetime client instead, instead of just a, a one-time thing. I love that. That's And then I could pull up a field and say, here's how much money I've earned over the last five years. Here are my top 10, my top 20 clients. Here are all the people I got referrals from. This guy's worth $118,232. You ought to pay attention to him ever. <laughs> right? I love that. I love that, Monica. All right, we've got, we're wrapping up here. We've got two more questions for you. Let's, uh, let's dive in. How do you suggest agents prepare for this new virtual world that we're, that we're in right now? What would you say are a couple of things that you can break it down to? You know, it's the dumbest, simplest thing. This call is being recorded right now. Every Zoom call can be recorded. Record yourself doing a listing presentation. Record yourself staging a house or doing a walkthrough. I mean, record yourself so that, you know, you've got to have a background. This is my jail cell, my office here. But I've seen some really dumb backgrounds that people have, their bedrooms and, you know, craziness going on. Create your your office virtual office so it looks professional. Look professional. I have a t-shirt on, but I have a scarf on, so I look like I've got it together. But when I take off this, I just got a t-shirt on. So you have to play the game and you have to look professional. You have to be professional. So you can role play on a Zoom call and then you can look at yourself and critique yourself and get your 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 skills up immediately. Immediately. You know, in this market, you've got to be able to pivot, adapt, and change. Now, you can go back to the old ways at some point, maybe, maybe, maybe. But remember, just embrace who we, what we have right now and say, okay, how do I do this? Okay, I'm in Michigan. They shut it down. Okay, now what do I do? Okay, I do this. I do this. I get ready for this. And there's a pent-up demand. There will be people who can't stand their house after three months. There will people go, this is too big, this is too small, or I'm going to move my mother in, so we need another house. People are going to change their housing. So you've got to think about that, too. People are going to hate their houses. They're going to hate them. Mm -hmm. So you've got some opportunities there. So you just got to look at this all positive is the way I look at it. Why not? Who? What choice do I have? I'm not going to be a couch potato. That's Amen. stupid. That's practicing dying. Just get I over it. Not only are they going to hate their houses, they may ha hate the person they live with. So you could sell one and and and, and have them buy two. Exactly. Uh, listen, there's a, like I said, there's always an opportunity. Um, but but uh, but yeah, no, I totally agree in the sense that like, you know, too many agents are are in their own way, right? They're they can't like I've always been a firm believer that the greatest obstacle that an agent or an entrepreneur in general faces is themselves, right? Oh, I can't do this. I'm not gonna be able to sell a house like this, but people have done it. They still do it. And you need to talk to them and find out how they're like, I got into real estate in 2007 and Monica, you've been in it for 40 years. So you've been through a lot of ups and downs, but I got into real estate in 2007. I got into it right in the middle of a financial crisis and I had to learn how to sell a home um, in the worst financial time that I could, uh, that I imagine in my, in my lifetime, I went from making 20,000 as a waiter to making almost 100,000 as an agent in 12 months. And, and it's because I, ha there was no, I didn't know any other way to do it other than what yeah. I was given, right? And so we're in that same situation again. We don't, have, we don't know any other way to do it other than the situation that we're given. So everyone's figuring it out together. And if you just sit there, woe is me, then that's what's gonna happen. You're just gonna sit there, woe is me. And so get with people, talk to them, mastermind, see how people are getting things done. You know, Catherine Rain in Michigan, killing it with virtual tours. Nikki Klein, same thing. Ken Posick in Orlando, same thing. And yeah, deals are going to fall apart, but you're learning. You're, you're moving forward still, learning a new skill, and that's what we have to embrace. So I appreciate that you said that. It's awesome. Great, great. Love it's it. all about Love attitude. It. Yeah. Um, Tristan, do we have any final thoughts or questions? Oh, here's just one real quick. Okay, how does an agent... Uh, Lisa Davidson, she just wants to know, you know, we'll wrap up as an experience. What are you laughing for? I got questions from Mark. You ask me a I question and you answer it yourself. No, because I, you know why? Because listen, my mind's all over the place. I asked you, but then I answered it. 
as an experienced agent, how do, how do how does she keep learning all the technology, right? It can be really difficult and overwhelming, and I completely get that, right? It's so much in our face, right? What do we need? To, what should she focus on to get started? Oh, you know, you got to get to the basics first. You've got to have a CRM, of course. If you're with Keller Williams, you're, you're going to use Command. That's amazing and awesome, and there's many training videos on that. So, without knowing your business and analyzing, you know, learn learn the basics and you know there's so many online training so where you feel a hole in your business that you don't understand you, you leverage that off i'm not great at technology i know enough just to ask the right questions and then i leverage it off i get people i get people to take care of that yeah. there's only uh, there my brain you know so it's so I, I know enough to ask the right questions and i understand yeah. you know CRMs and what they can do and what I want them to do yeah. and yet I'm not the person pushing the buttons I yeah. leverage that off I think that also with technology you have to figure out what you want to accomplish right right uh, figure out where your business is coming from and where you want it to continue to come from and then focus on that and 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 Monica uh, Meg uh, is asking a question and Meg's a tech uh, a tech driver in 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 my region and she thinks that you should star in an unscripted next netflix show about your life <laughs> and i completely agree with meg uh because you speak the truth and and tristan and i love people that speak the truth right tristan we love truth hurts but you gotta hear it yeah the yeah. older you get you get more truthful let me tell you you don't give a rats you know what <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it so well thanks um, for being on monica we hey anytime you. love to talk to you guys on. again Thank you We've for the opportunity. This. Oh, let her well, hold on. We're all talking over each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're used because Nick does that all day. So don't even I worry about No, I just interrupt you. I don't talk over you. So <laughs> thank you anyway. for the opportunity. I wish everyone a great 2020. This is your time. This is your opportunity. Step into it. Thanks, everybody. You're the best. Thanks, Monica. Thank Have a great one. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it.